Right, what's up everyone? Welcome to a whole new video where I'm going to be showing you my step-by-step -step process that I use to pass prop firms with one or two trades sometimes. And the real secret behind being able to do this is utilizing the higher time frame to match up with my lower time frame entries. We have to line up our higher time frame with our lower time frame so that we can get these long moves that we can capture that are one to 10 risk reward and plus. So essentially, what this allows you to do is see the higher time frame narrative along with the lower time frame entries. Now, the issue with a lot of you guys is that you're trading only on the lower time frames and you're getting lost in all the noise. You need to know what's happening on the higher time frames. Like I say, it's like driving in a huge mist and you can only see a few meters in front of you. You're gonna crash into something. You're gonna drive off a cliff. You, you're not gonna know what's further ahead and that's why you have to zoom out and look at the higher time frames to know where price is going long term so you can hold these long term moves. Also, it allows you to hold trades for the appropriate amount of time when you are trading counter the higher time frame narrative. What that means is that if you know that long term the higher time frame is bullish, I'm not going to be looking to hold this trade forever. I'm not. I'm going to be cutting it short. I'm going to be taking a one to two, a one to three. I'm not going to be holding it forever because you're going to get break evens and you're going to maybe even get losses. Okay, but if you are pro trend on the higher time frame and your entry is all valid, guess what? You can hold it, you can pass your evaluation quickly, and you can maximize your risk reward on your live trading. Right, so let's piece together this whole step-by-step -step system that I have created. So before I carry on, a lot of people ask me, what pairs does this work on and what time frames are we going to be using? We're going to be using the four hour and the one minute for entries. The four hour is for the direction and so that we know where we are within price. So we're not just trading blind on the higher time frames and the lower time frames are just noise. So essentially what we're going to be doing is using pairs such as, and these are the pairs that generally work with this methodology. The S&P 500 works brilliantly with the Judas swing strategy. Like I say, if you want to have a look at the Judas swing strategy, look in the description below. The original video is there. Additionally, Fractal structure for your change of character entries is crucial to mastering the entries on the strategy. There is also a video in the description that shows you step by step how to map out fractal structure so that you can find the true change of character when you are looking to enter on the lower time frames. Personally, my favorite pairs to use with this is Euro USD and US 30. All right, it works brilliantly. The S&P 500 has also been really, really great. And I've had a lot of feedback from you guys saying that S&P 500 works as well. So a lot of people ask me, what is my favorite prop firm to trade with? And it's pretty easy. It's Blue Guardian. Blue Guardian has the best trading conditions of any prop firm I've traded with. It also has a built-in equity protector to stop you from getting stopped out on your daily loss limit. So guys, if you're looking to get an evaluation with Blue Guardian, I suggest that you use the link below and use the code GARTRADES for 10% off your purchase. So let's hop right into the dive down portion of this video where I show you all of the nuts and bolts of the strategy. Right, so on the one minute, a lot of you guys will immediately start looking for entries once the Asia lows are taken out. So currently, I'm using Asia as my liquidity because we're trading the London kill zone. Okay, so in order to do that, I just use the Asian session range indicator with these exact settings. Okay, um, don't worry about all this bottom stuff. It's just the times. Okay, and then for style, okay, you just take Asian and, and full Asian. Everything else is unticked. You can change it to whatever colors you like. All right. So pause the screen here so you've got the times and you can, you know, just make sure this is ticked and this is ticked, everything else unticked except for labels on price scale and values and status line. Those actually don't really count either. All right. So that's for those people asking. I use the Asian session range indicator. All right. I think it's by Rob Minty. Um, if you have a look here, this one here. Okay. So. 
let's get right into it. A lot of you guys with the Judas swing, you're looking immediately for entries once price sweeps the Asia lows right here. Okay, which is not wrong. You will be profitable in the long term. But if you want to have a higher win rate, you need to confluence things um, with the higher time frames. So again, for the entry of this strategy, the strategy just down below, the, there's a link down below that shows you how to do the entries of the Judas swing on the one minute. But the real source of the strategy is on the higher time frame and when you confluence that with your trades. So if you guys don't know the entry for the Judas swing, go down below and click on the link below before you continue with this video. Okay, and then you can come right back to it. Okay, and then I suggest that you have a look at the video on fractal structure so that you know when the true change of character happens. Okay, because that is crucial. So we've had a raid of the Asia lows. Okay, we haven't had the change of character just yet. The change of character, the fractal high would be right here. Okay, so let's see what happens. We continue down. Okay, currently our fractal high would not be here because this low is 753 and this low is also 753. So they are equal. They are, one is not longer than the other. Okay, so there is no fractal high. Our fractal high is still somewhere up here, I believe. So we continue down. It continues. Our fractal high would now be at this point here because this candle does not break this candles low and so this now becomes our fractal high now our fractal high is here because we've had a break of the lows and this candle did not break this previous candles low. again if you're struggling to understand what i mean here go to the link below and click on the fractal structure video it will show you how to trade fractal structure okay so we break below Okay, once again, and so our fractal high will shift to this candle. Let's just make sure the lows are lower. They are actually the same. So I would, in fact, although this one is, this one does not break below. So immediately we shift to this high right there. And we continue lower. And as we can see, this is not lower than this. So it now because this becomes the fractal high and we get a break above okay and it's a nice impulsive move so immediately we are thinking okay things are looking good okay so now the second step obviously to entry would be our it would be our uh, fair value gap right so we get that right here our fair value gap would be here now why would this be a good potential trade to take so before we even start to think about this entry, let's rewind the clock a little bit, okay? Before we get to this point, when the market opens and we're looking at the Asia range, what I do is this. I get onto the four hour time frame. I only use the four hour and the one minute, okay? A four hour shows me the overall trend direction because if I'm trying to pass this evaluation in one trade or maybe two trades if I take a loss or maybe even three trades if I take two losses and one nice big winner. What I need to know is can I hold this long term? Okay. Am I going to be able to hold this for a 1 to 10, 1 to 12, 1 to 13? Okay. So in order to do that, I need to time it with the higher time frame and we need to know what's going on. So when I'm looking at the higher time frame, right, it's crucial that you know how to map out your higher time frame. So essentially, we all know price moves with higher highs and higher lows like so. OK, we know that that's trivial stuff. So how do we map this out in a way that's pretty mechanical? So as we can see, price is moving and making lower lows and lower highs right here. Um, and so in order to have a break of structure, we must have a pullback. I think we can all agree. So here, there's a pullback, okay? And we map that out, okay? From this low part to here, okay? So we can now agree that this is the low. And once this breaks, we had a break of structure. So this gets broken, okay? And then we have this little pullback. Now, do we classify this as a pullback? Well, compared to this, not really, no. So I would classify this as a little minor pullback, okay? 
and then we continue lower. We then get this pullback, which I would definitely class as a pullback, and then we continue lower, okay? We need to have a body break below the lows to classify this as the swing high, okay? So this is a swing high, this is a swing high. We're now waiting for a break, so that now confirms us as the swing high, the break was right here, okay? It was a solid break. We then have a small pullback. Now again, it would be, you, it's debatable whether this is a pullback or not, okay? You can class it as a pullback. You can even measure these and create a rule for, say you want it to be 80 pips minimum before you class this as a pullback, okay? You can do that, but I prefer to just eyeball it, all right? Now this breaks below right here. Okay, we then have a small pullback as well. Again, I would class this as a pullback because it is significant. Um, let's just go a bit lower and then we continue lower. So as you can see, we've been trending down for quite a while. Okay, we then get price breaking bullish, right? So price breaks to the upside. So now we shifted bullish. Okay, so essentially that's where we are right now. We've had price break structure to the upside and we are now bullish. Now, what does that mean? That means that we are expecting price to do what? We are expecting price to retrace. Once we break structure, price retraces and we're waiting for price to retrace into a more discounted zone before continuing this pattern and breaking the highs. OK, we are obviously expecting price to retrace. To retrace and continue to make higher highs and higher lows because we've now shifted into a bullish pattern. So price is now retraced, okay? And what we can do is use either our FIB or this GAN box tool, mark it out from the high to the low, okay? And we can see that we've now retraced into an area of discount. When we're in this area of discount, that is when I start to look for buys to continue the level, um, to, to continue the move going forward. So here if price is here and we've just broken structure let's say all of this is gone okay then i would be looking for shorts to come into this discounted zone okay but right now why would i be looking for shorts there's no reason for me to look for shorts right i think we can all agree we're in a discounted zone okay there's also a few other reasons that i'm going to go over shortly we're in a discounted zone why would we look for price to go shorter? We've also got this low that's now protected. It's a strong low because in theory, we're looking for price to come into a discount and continue the pattern higher, okay? To, to make a higher high. So there are a lot of reasons for you not to go short at this point. It is the worst possible point to go short. And so what a lot of you guys do is when you go down to the one minute and you're looking for your Judas swing entry, you see a short and you immediately enter a short and you're not only entering a short so say price sweeps the highs here you start you look for your chalk okay you look for your chalk okay and you're getting into a short okay and then you're holding it for the lows you're holding it for these lows why would you hold it for the lows okay because price is not going to break the lows it's very unlikely that price is going to break the lows we've just started a new bullish trend okay we're at the bottom essentially of a bullish trend there's no reason for you to do that you can however start to look for counter trend shorts okay but you need to be in a premium zone up here you need to be here there needs to be a change of character which happens here okay there's a change of character that happens here. Once change of character happens here, we could have looked to get short in this area here, okay, in a premium zone until we got to this discounted zone right here, right? And then we could have started to look to take some risk off the table because guess what? Price is most likely going to start to turn around when it gets to this 50%. And actually price getting to this 50% was already unlikely because when price changes character after a long a, a long bearish um, momentum like this, often price will not even retrace. It will just break and then do a little retracement and continue. It won't even come to discount, okay? Um, it usually moves with a lot more momentum. So price has come back for us. And so now we've got to analyze what are the other things telling us that price is ready to go long. So if we look to the left, we can see that price broke structure. Where is the area that price broke structure from? We can immediately see that there is a downwards movement here. Price moves up, 
Let me change the color of this, in fact. Price moves up, retraces, and then breaks structure, okay? I hope you guys can see that. Now, this is where the retracement happens from. And we can see there's already been a re reaction from this zone. So we're in a four hour order block right here, okay? And you can see that price is reacting from this area. So again, we're expecting for this zone to hold because we're expecting for this low to hold. So price is now in this low and we're expecting for it to break the highs, okay? Or at least come up here, okay? So that would be our targets to target is here, firstly, or the Asia highs as well depending on where your zones are obviously if we're doing an evaluation like i said we're not going to be looking to go super crazy because firstly um and a lot of challenges and a lot of you guys have pointed this out and i also bear this in mind when i'm doing my evaluation you do not generally want to be holding for more than a day because again your equity resets so your max loss will reset so if you're five thousand or let's say five percent in profit okay and your day resets if you lose that 5% and it's still running, okay, that trade's still running and you go back down to break even, you will violate your account because guess what? Technically, you've lost 5% to them because your day has started 5% up, even though the trades are open. So you have to be careful of that rule, okay? I hope you guys understand that. So once again, we're in this zone, okay? And so with that in mind, we're expecting price to come down and complete the pattern right so we then go down to the one minute and again this is how i determine my direction so we've got all of those things in our in our favor so now we are feeling confident about the trade going long okay we're confident about holding it for a longer period of time okay so as we can see let's rewind price so price has swept okay it's come down swept and now we're waiting for the change of character. We went over that already. Price changes character, not here, because these are equal lows, okay? They're not, if you look, hover your mouse over. This one says six, uh, 753 over here. And this one also says 753. So they're the same, so that is not a fractal high. Price continues lower. This will be our fractal high here, I believe. If I remember correctly, price continues lower. This is now our fractal high, okay? And then we wait for the chalk. We get the chalk and we get the fair value gap. So this would be our fair value gap. Again, you guys can also use the OTE entry like I showed in previous videos. Um, so essentially what we're gonna do is place our entry here on the fair value gap. Okay, like I said, you can also use the OTE entry like this you can also use the ote entry which will give you a better risk reward but the chances of you being tagged in are less also if we look at the risk reward already we literally got like three pips okay so yeah i think we're good um and so the ote entry often i just use when the when the stop loss is larger than five pips we can look to refine it a little um just so that we get a better risk reward but in this case i think we're good okay so again we would look to target the highs of asia at the very least a 9.6 say let's let's make it a bit more difficult for ourselves let's say we're looking for 10 percent. let's say we are doing a evaluation of the prop firm that needs you to get 10 percent for that first phase okay so we're looking for 10 percent. so we're going to hold this trade for a full 10 percent obviously as long as it doesn't go longer than a day because a lot of prop firms like i say have that equity rule for max daily loss so you need to be careful of that so right let's hop into this trade because it is valid we are in once again we are within a four hour area order block okay we are within this four hour order block let me just make this a little more opaque so that we can see through it okay and we're expecting for price to go higher okay we also have to be prepared for the fact that this may not hold price may go a little lower and pick up more orders over here before deciding to continue higher okay so now we've entered okay we're in a bit of drawdown we get a little reaction okay so once again if this was counter trend or if we were just looking for small profits we may have gotten a one to two here okay but price continues lower okay so we take a loss here right we take a loss on this trade 
We then continue lower. And again, we are valid for entries because we've swept the lows once again. So we've taken more liquidity and we've filled up more orders down here. Okay. So now I would be looking for this area to be swept for this to change character, which would be once price gets to here and then we will continue higher. So we then get a nice impulsive move with a full candle. Okay. It's not just a wick, which is also nice to see. We're then looking for the uh, fair value gap. However, it gets filled immediately. This candle gets filled immediately. There's no gap here. Okay. So we're looking for a gap once again. And here we've got a very small gap. Okay. If we zoom right in, you can see there is a gap here. All right. And so this would be where I draw my FVG on. Okay. And then I would be looking to enter there. So I would place my entry right here with my stop just below here. Now you could have put your stop just below here. However, guys, we have to be realistic. Okay. We cannot just put, it's easy for me to say it because obviously I know what happens here with this particular example. All right. But when we're being realistic and we're testing, we need to be realistic. We can't cheat ourselves, right? You need to give yourself at least an extra pip of room and we need to at least cover the lows. So that's what I'm going to do. Cover the lows. Okay. I recommend that unless you want to use an OTE entry, which you can, like I showed in uh, previous videos, you could do this and use an OTE entry, which obviously you're going to get a way better risk reward. Okay. But you must understand that there's a good, there's a good chance of your order being missed. Okay. So we've got a four pip entry, 3.9 roughly. So, um, and then obviously we're going to target these Asia highs at the very least. We could fully target the, um, we could fully target um, the highs, but again, we're not needing to. So again, we've taken a loss here. So we could have taken a 1% loss. So we're risking 1% of trade. So we're looking for at least 11%. Okay. So that is what we're going to aim for with this trade. We are fully in line with the four hour trend. All right. Bear that in mind. We're in, within a very strong four hour zone. Okay. And everything is lined up. We know that the highs are weak. We're targeting the weak highs and we know that these lows are protected. We've also mitigated deeply into this four hour zone. Okay. And we've had multiple sweeps of uh, liquidity. So things are in our favor right here. So let's see us get tagged in here. Okay. And then we're in clearly and then we can start to hold for the Asia highs firstly. Okay. So right now we're just holding and we're hoping that this passes our evaluation. Okay. So we hold and we hold. Now we're coming up to these Asia highs. Okay. We're still holding. We've taken the Asia highs. Okay. Now, bear in mind that this is where price could reverse again because we've just swept liquidity of the Asia highs. OK, however, we know that our four hour structure is in our favor. All right. And we know that we are within a discounted zone on that four hour um, as well. And so price continues. And there we go. We got our 11 percent. OK, and then obviously, if we wanted to, we could have hold all the way for these four hour highs. All right. We could literally hold the trade until a new high is created. Okay. Because we've come into discount, we've reacted off of this zone and we are trading within session. So we are, we are timing it within the session as well. So we could literally target these full zones, but obviously we don't need to in this case. Why? Because we're just passing our evaluation. Also guys, 11%, 10% is, is a lot. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, what you could also do if you're on a live account is take partials here and then just hold a small amount for the full 27 R. Okay. Which you are fully okay to do because all the probabilities are in your favor. So that's it guys. That's how you can pass your challenge in a couple of trades, just lining up the higher time frame narrative with your lower time frame entries. And I recommend that you go and test this. Okay. And see how much higher your win rate will be firstly. And secondly, you'll see how many more take profits you hit because you're not trying to swing long trades that are actually 
trending in the opposite direction on the higher time frames and you are taking smaller scalp trades when you are trading counter trend all right and you know at the areas of which you can take those smaller risk reward trades and which areas you can really go for those longer risk reward trades and when you see this you know that you've got a good chance of getting that long that long trade that can pass your evaluation. So thank you to everybody who watched. I'd really appreciate it if you go down below and click on the subscribe button so that you see more from my channel in future. I really appreciate all of your support and I hope that you took value from this video. Cheers everyone. See you in the next video.